seriously, like, I just start filming and exactly at the same time they start making noise. We're just gonna have to go through this. <laughs> and my cat just decided to lounge back there. Hello everybody, it's Len. How are you all doing today? So as I'm filming this one day before the video is due, I'm currently studying for my Japanese exam finals and I wasn't expecting to make a video at all, but as I'm revising, I started remembering all these memories from my Japan trip last year that I hadn't yet told you guys. Some of them cute, funny or embarrassing. So I thought since you guys really like the Japanese related videos, I would just make one right now, hoping that it won't come off as milk in it, but it's either that or no video this week, so I thought you guys would really appreciate it. And don't get me wrong, the Japanica series are probably the videos I love the most on this channel. <laughs> it does make me a little sad that the other videos aren't getting that much love. This said, I'm still making a Japan related video. Yeah, figures. <laughs> I mean, this video, I'm filming it a day before publishing day, like half unscripted, and I have a feeling that it'll probably work more than some of the videos that have taken me weeks to make. The Japanica series themselves, like per video, used to take me two to three days to finish and recently one of the videos that I made in one day improvised, unscripted, where I wasn't feeling well at all physically and mentally just like overtook everything it's more popular and yeah, I'm holding very still right now because I'm editing with a mask and who wants to edit a moving mask in Premiere Pro? am I right? I can move now. But yeah, I know it's totally normal. I'm not complaining. I'm kind of making a joke about it. I've heard big YouTubers talk about this all the time. So I know it's normal. I know it's not only me. Um, but yeah, uh, social media. You've been playing around with my head recently, haven't you? Especially you, Instagram. <laughs> Jokes aside though, I have been feeling a little overwhelmed by life in general recently. And when that happens, social media is not the place to be. Yeah, not good for self-esteem at all. Nope, 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 nope. This said, if you do want to follow me on social media, all links below. <laughs> okay, that happened. Um, so yeah, I wish I could say that this is like, this is it for the rambling part of the video, but we're about to get started and I don't think I'm the best storyteller out there at all because yeah, I I ramble, I, I, I forget the point, I lose like the thread of the story and I stutter and I trip on my words and I Okay, let's start with the story that I think I sort of mentioned in one of my Japanica videos like on the very first day or the second video but the first actual full day I had in Japan. I think it's that one. And it's the story of the Oji-san the very first day I arrived in Tokyo, Japan. So I arrived in Tokyo early afternoon, I think, and by the time I got like my suitcase and my luggage and exited the airport and figured out how, oh yeah, I got my JR pass at the airport and then I had to find um, the Narita Express, geez, the memories are starting to get a little far. I found the Narita Express to get to... Was it Shinjuku? I think I went to Shinjuku. Shinjuku, then Ueno, and then another metro to where my uh, hostel was. I think that's how I went. So it took a while, and by the time I got to the stop near my hostel, it was already nighttime, but bear in mind that nighttime started around 5 p.m. at that time in Japan. It was really crazy. Um, so I arrived there, and obviously jet-lagged as hell, exhausted, and I have to look for my hostel. No clue where it is. I don't have the internet on my phone. I don't have a map. I just have my notes in my notebook, and I thought I had been really thorough with my notes. Turns out I took the wrong exit I think I couldn't get my surroundings straight because I, there was this intersection and I couldn't figure out where on it I was compared to my notes so I, I must have looked a little confused with my luggage and my notebook and I don't know what else I was holding I couldn't figure out how to use street names I guess I should have researched it before but I was basically lost and I didn't know in which direction I was supposed to go and this old man came up to me and asked if I needed any help and I just arrived in Japan 
and I did not expect this and this is probably the, like the first real memory I have of arriving in Japan is this perfect stranger asking if I need help and my Japanese was even worse than it is now and his English was decent but yeah we were trying to like communicate with each other I gave him like the name of the hostel like the road name but we still couldn't figure it out but I knew that there was a fire station close to it in the same road so um, I tried to explain like fire station and somehow that he understood and he pointed me in that direction and I found the hostel directly after that so it's a cute little anecdote because it was really cute I call him an oji-san because it really was like this little grandpa figure and really kind and, and it's not something that would happen here I don't think not with that much kindness it felt really genuine it felt like he really wanted to help and um, I don't remember his face, I don't remember what he looked like. In my head he's wearing like this fisherman's hat, but that probably is not what it was. Like I said, just arrived, 14 hour flight, transportation, I was exhausted. But that was really nice and it happened more than once. So I'm really glad for that little memory. The second time I got helped with directions uh, was a little funnier because I was in Kyoto. I'm pretty sure I was in Kyoto not in the central area of Kyoto. I don't think it's called Central Kyoto. I don't remember the names at all, but um, I know I'd spent a few days in that area, in this more touristy area. And I went outside of it to see a particular temple that I don't remember the name of, but it definitely was outside of that. Maybe it was the Arashiyama Bamboo Grove, maybe it was a temple? I really don't remember. Fushimiyanari maybe, but I think Fushimiyanari is touristy enough that it would be better indicated. It, was, it wasn't it was easy to find, that's what I'm getting at. And um, I was coming back and it was pouring with rain and I was lost. I could not find the station. Impossible. I, I had wandered away and I was like in back alleys and Google Maps was sending me in really weird roads and there was no one around pouring with way like horrible situation to be in as a like visiting foreigner so I had to find the courage to enter one of these quaint quiet little you know like roadside stores and ask for help <laughs> As you can imagine, with none too little Japanese skills in an area that was away from the touristy zone, it was gonna be an issue. But still, I have very fond memories of this moment where the little old lady that held the store was more than happy to try and help me. Except that I think I, I managed to ask, like, Eki wa doko desu ka? or something like that. <laughs> something very basic and then she went on to trying to explain where it was in a full Japanese like sentence after sentence after sentence and I did not understand a word but she was smiling and she'd come with me to the front of her store and she was pointing in various directions and I understand directions like I understand left right straight like really basic things but she was saying like hidari migi masugu everything <laughs> at once and I didn't know which one it was so in the end I kind of pointed like that way and she was like yes that way so I <laughs> I don't remember if I found it directly or if I wandered for a while after that, but I do remember this memory very fondly of this extremely nice little lady who just wanted to help, but just confused the shit out of me. <laughs> but it's still something that warms my heart to think about it, like how genuine the kindness was and like the will to help. It was all there, it didn't seem like a bother, they were like really animated, like they want to help you and that was really really sweet so this one isn't really an anecdote but it is flattering I suppose um, and it happened once or twice but I have this particular memory in my head right now it's, um, where was I? somewhere in Tokyo oh I've already forgotten most of the names, I know it's really bad. But keep in mind that I've been cramming Japanese into my head for like the past week and 
everything is kind of muddled up in my head right now. So I don't remember the name of this place. I think it starts with an A. There's, there's a big temple there and in front of the temple there are a lot of stalls. Um, permanent stalls that are there and it's near my hostel so I pre I'm pretty sure I mentioned it in one of the videos because it was one of my favorite places to be um, get to the point, get to the point but I was wandering in the stalls when these high school girls um, probably high school girls, I mean I'm sorry middle school, high school, I couldn't tell asked if they could take a photo with me and that had never happened in my life before that was the first time that I had gotten stopped in the street sure, they didn't recognize me, they didn't know who I was but they just saw this tall foreign girl and asked for a photo and then they put a filter on it and made my eyes even bigger than they are now and they were like, oh my god, he's so cute and it was really flattering and like a bunch of schoolgirls have got this random stranger in one of their photos and it's it's really funny to think about that but it feels nice to be seen somehow I it sounds a little sad said like that but it does feel nice when somebody sees you like notices you and it also it is also a fun memory I wish I could have asked them like send me that photo so I could have it myself or like given them my name so they could tag me in it but yeah that was the first time it had happened during my trip so I think I was under I was shocked and also very sweaty because I remember that day being very humid so yeah, um, <laughs> that happened. It was flattering. Japan is good for my for my ego and my self-esteem, contrarily to social media. Okay, I wrote down bus in Kyoto as a reminder that I wanted to talk about a bus in Kyoto, but I can't remember what it was. Oh, I remember. Oh, that one's silly. That one's a little embarrassing. I didn't. I don't think I've done anything majorly embarrassing while I was in in Japan. But there were like small embarrassing moments where I didn't understand something or something went wrong and I was just like mortified to be, you know, that foreign person <laughs> that makes mistakes. So uh, I think it was the first it was the first time for me on a bus in Kyoto. And I was very nervous because I didn't know how you were supposed to pay and luckily they have like a lot of like panels and uh, there's a TV that keeps talking about what you, you should do or you can't do and what areas you're going to be passing by and what there's there to see highly touristy area so you should be fine but I'm always afraid to mess up I don't know why, I'm always afraid so I was studying other passengers like do they get up a uh, long time before their, their, their stop or do they wait for the bus to stop to get up and get off like do you need to be prepared in advance like um, where do they put their coins what slot is for what and yeah I thought I had it I thought I was prepared so my stop comes up I get up I put my coins in and they start shooting out from the bottom because turns out I'm putting the coins into the coin changing machine and I didn't notice till I had shoved in most of my fare so I had all these tiny coins like shooting out and the driver was like doing this at me which you know took me a while to understand what meant stop like no stop <laughs> and I know it's not a big deal but I felt mortified I was like I had all these I had all these the small change in my hand that I had to give to the driver because he was just like holding out his hand like okay just just give me it, I'm gonna do it, just leave not like that, but that's what I felt like it was so I just handed him all my coins and I was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry <laughs> and I left and I think it was fine, maybe he's used to it I mean, like I said, it's a touristy area but I can still feel myself blushing like I said, I hate making mistakes in front of people and screwing up inside of a people-filled bus was embarrassing enough for me um, this sign though it happened to me on two other occasions this one time I was doing I was in Hiroshima and I went to the supermarket to do some shopping because it was the end of my trip I was kind of out of funds for like fancy restaurants and even convenies were like bordering on luxury so I bought a few things to cook inside my Airbnb and I wanted to ask the supermarket um, checkout person, that's the word I'm looking for, if I could pay by card but 
I had just taken out the car to say like, may I? But I hadn't gotten like two words out that she was like, no. <laughs> So I was like, okay, I'm sorry, I, I, I was just asking. I wasn't gonna force it on you, but I guess maybe she saw a foreign girl like wanting to pay by card and she was like, oh my God, how am I gonna, how am I gonna explain to her that we do not accept cards? And she was like, mm. but yeah, <laughs> anyway, that just like a silly one. And this other time was, I think in Osaka. I think it was in Osaka where I was about to walk inside the train and a guy on the platform um, who worked there obviously like put his hand in front of me like stopped me from entering the train and was like no like just like really strict no explanation it's like you cannot get on this train and then the doors closed and the train left and I was like what just what just happened <laughs> so that were like the, the, like the three times I saw this this sign so now if you go and somebody does this at you it either means stop or no though no is usually like this like forbidden no this is like no forbidden and this was like no stop rather i think correct me if i'm wrong but that's what it felt like to me <laughs> okay this video is getting a little long so i'm gonna end it here with the little anecdotes if i remember any other anecdotes i will write them down and i could always make another video that way you do get a little like sprinkle of japan here and there but it does feel like i'm milking it and i don't want to milk it so i hope you enjoyed this video guys i'm sorry for my ranting at the beginning but it does it did feel good to get it off my chest and if you are coming from the japan series uh please give my other videos a try at least try i know they're not all good i do a lot of experimenting i know my acting is terrible um but i do try i try my best and they're, they're all my babies and they're all my work and but yeah don't forget to check out my social media instagram for my art that's where i post the most at the moment twitter for updates a lot of updates a lot of random updates but a lot of updates also for when i'm streaming live for example i stream live once a week on twitch usually on fridays so come hang out with me because i draw and i talk and i chat with you guys and it's so it's so much fun and we also choose the food of the stream come check that out it's if you're not subscribed to my channel, ooh, flashing camera battery, perfect timing. If you're not subscribed to this channel yet, please do give it a thumbs up, uh, ring the bell icon. I'm doing everything in the wrong order, but ring the bell icon to be notified for new videos. And I'm going to go back to studying Japanese. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Love it to death, but studying makes my head hurt. Anyway, see you guys very soon. I'll work you all. Well.